Sure. Thank you for coming. My name is Amy Brown. Uh, you already somewhat know what we're here to talk about because you read the program, I'm assuming. But I just want to ask the question, since I had so many compliments on my cow, can anybody tell me what all of these things have in common? Uh, they're all mammals. Good. Oh, that's good. Start there. Leaders. Next up from here. What's this? Leaders. But I don't Leaders? Know the, I don't know about the hairy cow. Oh, no. no. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Maybe that's over here. Respiring organisms. Uh, uh, what oh, kind respiring. of Aspiring or respiring. respiring? They're all breathing creatures. Oh, oh. 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 okay. Science, great. Um, <laughs> They are all Stoics. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. How do you know the emotional state of that cow? <laughs> <laughs> so we all know who this is, Teddy. Yeah. Well, maybe we don't. I apologize. So this is Teddy Roosevelt. He uh, is president, past president. Teddy Roosevelt on his expeditions throughout South America is uh, thought to have carried texts with him, Stoic texts. Um, I have no actual uh, visual evidence of that, but in a museum it does say somewhere that Teddy Roosevelt carried stoic texts with him on, on his adventures. And then up here we have General James Stockdale. Is anybody familiar with uh, this individual? Okay, so he uh, was in the Navy and he was shot down during Vietnam and spent seven and a half years in a POW camp. Two of those years, his legs were in iron, so he was unable to move his legs. And several of those years, he was in solitary confinement. Um, he later, well, before he joined, enlisted in the Army, or excuse me, in the Navy, he got a master's degree in philosophy and was a Stoic. Uh, when he was shot down out of the sky, he claims that he said to himself, I am leaving the world of man and entering the world of Epictetus. Do you know this story? You've heard of this story, okay. So Epictetus is one of the more famous uh, Stoic philosophers. Uh, just some quick background information. The Stoics were more concerned with living their life. It was a very practical philosophy. Uh, so there wasn't a lot of writing things down. So most of what we have about Stoicism is passed uh, down verbally and students were just frantically writing what they could and what they could remember. So whatever I claim to tell you here today uh, is a loose interpretation of what was being taught back then. So everything, even for Epictetus, uh, we have actually nothing of his that he wrote. It's all his students who had followed him around and tried to, to write everything down. And then last but not least, um, I'm from uh, the Northwest. Uh, this is the Seattle Seahawks team. So there's a number of corporations and professional uh, sports organizations who work with consultants that specialize in stoicism uh, to overcome adversity, to come back from losses, to continually win uh, championships and things like that. So, and then there's me, Amy Brown from the University of Florida. I'm uh, getting my PhD. I got my master's at the University of Florida a couple years ago. Uh, and did my thesis on Stoicism, and I just happened to enjoy the philosophy, and I have convinced my lovely uh, advisor here to allow me to uh, research this, this lovely topic. So today, what we're going to be doing, uh, I hope to teach you a little bit about Stoicism, uh, but before we get... <laughs> yes. The, the highly yeah. bad. Oh. How was that Actually, let me get let me go let me come to here. So, oftentimes when I chat with people about what it means to be stoic, the reaction I get or the description I get is something that looks like or is embodied by that cow. Like very like no emotion, just kind of like standoffish, don't talk to me. Not in terms of that one, the black and white photo I love, but yeah. Uh, but anyways, so, sorry, it's totally fine. Sorry. No worries. I understand. Um, 
One of the things that I want to do before we jump into talking about the philosophy is I want to hear what comes to your mind when you hear the word stoic. When somebody brings that up or describes someone as stoic, what do you think of? Um, a human who's trying to control their own consciousness and their responses to the external world. A human? Say that again. Who's trying to control their own consciousness, their state of mind, uh -huh. and how they respond to the external world. Beautiful. Hi. I've been very stoic the last two days. There's a stoic we need to Completely unemotional. Completely unemotional. <laughs> Who would want to be stoic? Okay, why do you say that? Why do you say, what's wrong with them being unemotional? Uh, because that's the opposite of me, and my people are opposite of me. They're not going to True. Others, what comes to mind? I think of like a big ego. A big <laughs> ego? Yeah. Do you know somebody? Is someone coming to mind? For an example? Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> yeah, I, just like, um, I just think it's like a package deal. Like if someone's stoic, then they have a big ego. A package deal? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what behaviors about being stoic makes you leap to a big ego. What? Tell, tell um, me. I think that maybe if there is some adversity and you'll find ways to cope with it and be stoic, then there's also a great deal of pride that comes with that that may or may not get in the way sometimes. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So sort of born out of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think based on your uh, definition or your description earlier, I think if somebody who's living day to day and not worrying about uh, documenting what's happening, but really experiencing the moment. Okay, living in the present. Okay. Colby, you're really chewing on something. I want to know. Well, these days, I think of Amy Brown when I hear the word. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say steadfast and a level of consistency. Comes to mind. Okay. Is there something that you're drawing from? Because I'm not that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I, I just think it's, it's kind of, and I think of that in like a strength way, um, of being able to be somewhat resilient or withstand different things and be consistent through that. Okay, a positive attribute. Yeah. Okay. So we had a negative attribute over here. I don't emotion. know if that's un, uh, that unemotional is negative. It is for me. Okay. But some people would view that as a positive. That, that they were unemotional. Like straight face. Like you could play poker. <laughs> like poker. Yeah. So yeah. Emotional. A poker face. Yeah. A poker face. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Gabriella, did you have something you wanted to contribute? Everybody does. No? <laughs> so they normally know what I'm thinking because I'm only saying it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was going to say it. So, the dictionary definition of stoicism is the endurance, I, can't, my, I need some glasses, the endurance of pain or hardship without the display of feelings and without complaint. Yeah, right? You're like, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> I get a pain nail, I'm going to level body. Empathize with me. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to discuss the Stoicism doctrines. Did it, who, I don't very well remember who was in the room earlier this afternoon. Is any, do you, a few of you, just a few of you. Okay, great. So I won't be repeating myself too much. Um, we're going to look at what a eudaimonic look, life looks like for you. We're going to apply these Stoic disciplines to some scenarios, and then we're going to reflect on how they can in, help you to live your best life. Or as Colby said, be more like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is anybody familiar with this term? Or have heard of this term or seen this term? Eudaimonia. Earlier today. Earlier today. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was, uh, you know, what they, what they call the soybeans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just spotting you. because it's Greek, uh, to human flourishing, a contented state of being, happy and healthy and prosperous. So at the core, I, doesn't it just, I love it. You're like, okay, yeah. 
How? Yeah, sign me up. Um, at the core of Stoicism is eudaimonia. So the Stoics are a practical group uh, who are just trying to live their best life. Like they believe in human flourishing. Uh, Dr. Jagger was asking, I think it was you, about the pyramid, um, Maslow's hier hierarchy of needs. And she was like, so do you just, do you get the whole pyramid? And I was like, this, this essentially, yes, that is what we're talking about here. Um, so eudaimonia is more than the English translation of happiness. Uh, I could spend the rest of the time talking about what eudaimonia is, so we're just going to leave it at that. It's, it's, that, it's that fulfillment, um, that can, again, the contentedness and the peace, uh, and stoicism is all going to help you get there. So part of how you feel that contentedness and that peace is coming, for the stoics, is through being virtuous or having arete, which is excellent, excellence or perfected condition of the soul. So the Stoics are, um, we are all uh, living beings. Uh, the only thing that separates us from other animals on the planet is our ability to reason and to have practice critical thought. And our purpose is to understand, um, or our goal is to understand our purpose in life and live that to the fullest. <laughs> um, the virtues for the Stoics are courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom. So what we're, as a Stoic, what you're always uh, in pursuit of is that virtuousness behavior. So practicing courage, being just, temperance. Does anybody know what temperance is or what is being implied by temperance? Oh, not, you know, controlling your temper. Moderated, yeah. so all things in moderation. Yeah, yeah, oh. Yeah. Oh, that. No. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, if you have those three, if you have those three virtues and you're able to Sorry. practice them, then you would be a wise Stoic. Uh, side note here: the ultimate Stoic is called a sage, and it's impossible to accomplish because as people, we're going to continually be facing challenges and having to manage our desires and things that are external to us. We never achieve being a sage, but it's what you are all uh, in pursuit of. Okay, so I'm going to take, let's see, it's 440. Darn. We're, what we were going to do is take your note cards and on the back side, without the sticky notes, I was going to have you, um, and maybe you could just jot down a few words about what is, what would eudaimonia look like for you? If you got to have that whole Maslow's Pyramid at one point in your life, where would you be? Who are you with? What, are you eating something? What does that feel like? Where are you and what are you doing and who is there? So dream for a second, which can be hard to do, um, and think about what would eudaimonia look like for you? Just a couple minutes. You're shaking your head at me, Carlos. You don't believe in this. Oh, uh, I don't think there's a way because it, my way of being, I always want something more. Mm -hmm. So I can find a place of just being there and enjoying everything right there because I've always wanted to go somewhere else or be or do something more. Yeah. So the Stoics are on to you, and they talk about that is the the uh, what is behind all human suffering is this idea of where you at. You always want something else, and so then you can find when you finally get to take that step to get what you wanted, then you put it out in front of you. And the human, the point of human suffering is in between you and the thing. And for the Stoics, it's all about making that space as small as possible. So where you are is exactly where you want to be, because they know exactly what you're saying. Like we always want to move it forward because we feel like as long as I'm doing something and working towards something, then I can be happy. And when we get there, we just keep pushing it out. And their whole goal is to take that and bring it right here. But if there's no path there, how do you enjoy the walk moving forward? How do you gain it somewhere else? So desire for something outside is not uh, the same as standing still. You can still exist and be and do. But uh, without this concept of, uh, I, there's a lack, there's a, uh, something missing in your life. It's all just become surplus and added on value. Because to the Stoics, at any time, 
all that can be taken away from you. Like so your health, your family, your wealth, all can go away. And so they want to bring you to this place because if that all goes away, you can still stay happy. They don't want you to be disrupted on your journey. But it makes sense for the ones who can get into that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Which is what, like, like I said. Or the ones who can afford it. <laughs> or the ones who can afford it. That's a very so good point. So is, is then, is Udamani a, like a, like a call or a job? Is Eudaimonia a call or a journey? Like a goal, I mean a goal. Uh, a goal. A end goal. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a state of being. Yeah. yeah, because if it were a goal, then it would yeah. exacerbate the thing I was just explaining. Yes, yes, that's yeah. why I was so thinking. So it's just a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mindset, mm -hmm. it's a state of, it's a, it's a way you view the world. It wouldn't be, so you could have a, Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm going to have to think on that because I might end up talking in a circle and I want to... And then it'll be... Yeah. 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 Would, would, yeah. Yeah. would other kinds of is, you know, other kinds of, of, uh, of philosophical ways of knowing be interested in Edamonia? Yes. Yeah. So many philosophies yeah. are in pursuit of eudaimonia. Stoicism exactly. is just one of the ways. Yeah. Hed hedonism is in pursuit of eudaimonia. Yeah. Just the opposite yeah. pathway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So hedonism is like I'm always knowing, you know, it's always about me and I'm going to be enjoying. And, and we're going to get into why the Stoics differ from that. Because as I was saying earlier, they see themselves as one of many uh, living beings. And so they recognize that connection to all other things, and they want to be a part of that system, where hedonism is more, you know, it's all about me. But the Stoics recognize that they can't, they're not alone. We're all connected, and we all uh, want to help each other. So, um, is anybody familiar with the Serenity, Serenity Prayer? Thank you, okay. So it is said that, uh, and I'm so sorry, I didn't even cover this. Stoicism is from 300 BC, so much earlier than uh, Christianity. And, um, you know, depending on who you read and what opinion you take, somebody would say that the serenity prayer and the virtues, the Christian virtues, were born out of Stoicism. So this encompasses Stoicism to say, Know what is in and out of your control and only focus on the things that are because all you're concerned about is being virtuous and having good character and having that, that, that excellence to achieve eudaimonia. So, sounds great, but life is hard. You know, we are not all rich. You know, people die, people get sick. I have desires, I have wants. We all wanted to come to Greece. Um, so in order to manage these desires, uh, the Stoics have created these three disciplines. So the discipline of desire, the discipline of action, and the discipline of ascent. And these all help uh, us act in order to achieve that level of eudaimonia. Uh, we've got six, this goes till five? Yes. Okay. We're cruising. Okay, this is good. Oh! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just why it didn't spill. That's like something. It's okay. These are the shoes you just throw in the wash, so we'll just carry on. Okay. So for the uh, discipline of desire is monitoring that which you. So monitor what you want uh, in order to focus on where, where on where you spend your time and your energy. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking about like when you were saying discipline of desire. It made me think about the lizard brain okay. and how within me there's an aggressive urge from evolution that even someone like Jose that I've known for years could do something that would make you want to pay him. But I can focus my energy on not being an aggressive person, which I've recently learned to do while driving. I used to get a lot more road rage and I finally beat it. I hold this. Okay. Or the record before. Bring this, <laughs> this is um, that you're making a you're making a really strong point actually for ascent, the discipline of ascent. But these are all related, and we're going to get to these case studies, and you'll be able to apply any of the disciplines you want. Which I love about the philosophy: you can take what you want and leave the rest. You know, it's not 
uh, subscription, 100% uh, subscription. So the Stoics would say the things that are in your control are your opinions, so you nailed on that, your aims, so what you're after, your aversions, the thing you avoid, your grief, your joy, your moral purpose, or your will, and your attitude uh, towards what's going on, and your own good, and your own evil. So very uh, centric, because at the end of the day, that is really the only thing that we have control over. And if you think back to those virtues, can you guys imagine a world where all anybody was worried about is how do I be a more virtuous person and play my role in this world and look out for my common man? Like, you right, right, yeah. Change everything. It would change everything. So <laughs> focusing on what's in your control, um, for those of you who are interested in the topic and we might continue learning about it, that's also called the dichotomy of control. Um, and again, this is just helping you achieve that eudaimonia and, and be a good person and be virtuous. So the second one is my favorite uh, and the one I feel least comfortable explaining because it's so vast. Um, so please be nice if you have holes you want to poke in my presentation. This is the place, but <laughs> the discipline of action is all about how you choose to act and what you choose to do. So the discipline of control is understanding what is in your power and what isn't. And then action is saying, is this worth my time? How do I want to give into this or not? Um, and it's all based in the fact, like I was mentioning earlier, that we are all connected human beings. So for the Stoics, they believe in what's called the Logos. So uh, I learned this earlier this week from my guide. Uh, Stoicism was born in a time when there was all these gods. So there were gods for everything and they could explain, you know, the Greeks used them to explain all the random things that were happening in life. And the Stoics believed in a singular thing, whether you want to call it God, the universe, or otherwise. Uh, and that single being has created a purpose for everything. And they would, way back then, they would attribute it to the seasons, rain, how things grow and things die, and how we harvest, and what happens to humans, and birth, and death, and all that. So they saw that as this one big connected cycle. And they recognized that and our role in that. And they said, um, I have the tattoo on my wrist, which now is weird because I'm studying the philosophy, but I got it long, long before I knew what stoicism was. And it says amorphity, which is love your fate. So it's an understanding of who am I and what's the purpose that I'm here to serve as part of the logos. And knowing what that is informs your behavior under the discipline of action. Questions? Although you're doing a great job just as we go. Okay. Uh, and then the last one is my favorite. Um, it's related to cognitive behavior therapy. Are there any positive psychology Albert Ellis fans in the room? Okay. Uh, so the discipline of ascent is related to our impressions. And our impressions are the way that we feel when something happens. When it either happens to us, or we see it, or we hear it. And that act has an impression on us. And for the Stoics, when that happens, the discipline of ascent is a moment of pause, and we say, do we either want to give into this thing or not? And all of the um, discipline of action and the discipline of desire feed into this to question, to challenge ourselves, wh what is this thing that's happening to me and the way that I want to respond, is that actually going to do me any good? Is that actually going to fall under a virtuous act or uh, me being a good person and having good character. So practicing assent is checking yourself and saying, before I react to this thing, is the way that I want to do that um, the best way, the best way. And now I realize I forgot you to take, tell you to take notes on your sticky notes. I'm sorry, shoot. So all along, I meant for you to write down what some of these things were on your sticky notes. But what colors? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do now? Tell us, we'll do it. You, well, Kim, you're so nice. You okay, got, like, you've got so minutes. the blue. We've got ten minutes. The blue is the discipline of desire. Purple is action or. Er, 
What do I give you? Orange, pink? Yeah, pink, pink? and yellow. That's both of them. Okay. Write down what we struggle with in those? No. Take a couple, write down a couple notes to yourself about what these things are. So for the discipline of desire, maybe writing control, knowing what's in your control. Because what we're going to do is apply these disciplines to some case studies. Or if you can remember them, that, that's fine. <laughs> what? Okay, you got it? Okay, next one, discipline of action. We are all connected, we live according to nature, act in, uh, for the benefit of others, extend our, our love that we have for ourselves to other people, unity, I like that word. Okay, and then discipline of ascent, managing, uh, checking our emotions, uh, respond, not react, maybe, respond, not react. Let me help you with that. So the difference between this one and the first. This one would be, the first could be like step one, and this would be step two. So we'll, we'll get into this right now. Okay. Are you a student? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll start with this case study then. So the case studies we're going to look at are, um, I use them in a group with students and then a group with some ag professionals. So we're going to start with the one for students and we'll jump into the difference between the first and the third. Okay, so as a student, it's spring and you are excited to polish a proposal for submission to your first conference. Given it's your thesis and where you've spent most of your time in the last 16 months, a lot of weight is riding on the opportunity. It will also be your first experience in presenting research, and therefore a big plus for your CV is you apply for a PhD program. You have witnessed a number of colleagues being accepted into the conference in the last couple of years and are hopeful you can join, especially since UF appears to be a force in the space. This was for UF students, so. Unfortunately, the conference organizers emailed to inform you they don't have the room in their schedule to include your content. You were crushed. This moment was going to show how hard you worked and how passionate you were about working or are still are about how passionate you are about working in academia. So, how can you apply a stoic discipline to this scenario? Everything happens for a reason. Mm. There you go. So that is the logos. That is what they're saying when they're talking about the logos. Is there's there's something going on here, and I just need to accept this and move on. What else can I do? What up? So great. What up? What else? I can either get bitter, or I can get better. Okay. I would say, can I can I learn the skills so they can't deny me next time? Okay. So what discipline would you want to put that in there? It's not a quiz. It's not a quiz. I think part of it would be a scent for sure because it's controlling the ego. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And how you choose to respond to that. So that's one way, choosing how you want to respond. The other thing I heard in this simple statement is I can, what, can you say it again? I, I can either get bitter or I can get better. I can get bitter or I can get better. So, in regards to the first discipline, the discipline of control, exactly. there's nothing I can do. I have no control over what this is, this thing that's happening to me, the conference chair decision or otherwise. What I, so, it makes no sense to spend energy in that space. I do have control over getting better. So maybe I email a conference chair and I say, I'm, oh, you know, I'm so sorry to hear that. Do you have suggestions for the next time? Or are there other conferences? Or can I record myself? And can you provide that in the, as part of the program? So what you can and can't control. So you can't control what they, the, the decision they made, but you can control how you react to that, which is also awesome. What if the conference chair decides to give you the opportunity because of that email? Is that, because that changes to, oh, I can actually control that. 
Well, now, but you can control what you do. So now you can say, okay, I have this opportunity. How am I going to be the best at doing this opportunity? I'll show them. Yeah. Where would you like to move on and continue if you are already happy with that answer? Which, if you are happy with the answer, that you decide or you choose to be happy with the answer. Right? Yeah. And so why would you do something else if you are already happy with that answer? Oh, with it that you can't get in? Yep. Or, I don't know if you're happy. Isn't that the base of design, right? Yeah. So the, the choice could also be your degree. The, yeah. the choice yeah. is also that is what it did. It's to, you know, the, but it, it is it a reality. Is what it is. I accept that I don't do anything. No. Or I try now I have all this time to work on my something else. Yeah. 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 Is it that? Is it? Yeah. That causes the direction in which you can move that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Other thoughts? We'll do one other. Let's see. We've got four minutes, so we can do another case study. Okay. Another case study. Okay. I like this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go around to okay. This one's a good one for extension oh, yeah. agents. Black yeah. Rambo, that's uh, yeah. That's so it's that's not a um, Scottish No. <laughs> Put yourself in the in the shoes of like a egg of an egg professional, not an academic egg professional, but more in the field. So it's nearing the end of the workday, and your spouse calls. One of the one of your kids fell ill with the flu. Can you please pick up the other shoe and stop at the store for Gatorade? Your spouse asks. Yes. Yikes! That means you only have 20 minutes to finish your fence repairs and to get to daycare to pick up. On the way home, you stop at Publix with two littles in tow and cross paths with the school principal who wants to chat about the upcoming vacancy on the school board. Distracted, you lose track of the kids who start filling the cart with goodies. As the principal explains why you're a strong candidate, a young man approaches you looking disgustingly at your attire. He disregards the principal, immediately interrupting you both, and attacks your lifestyle. How could you possibly live with yourself, making money off the lives of animals? He references your clothes, claiming he knows you're an egg, and spouts statistics on carbon footprint and unsustainable nature of today's eggs, egg practices. Pointing to your kids, who have sufficiently emptied the contents of the shelves into the cart, he says it's not surprising you would be irresponsible about the future of our planet, given how you handle your own children. The principal has begun to bag away, and you are feeling cornered. What do you do? That's when I'm no longer spelling. <laughs> Just like with Publix and Gainesville. <laughs> <laughs> That's when that video kicks in. <laughs> I'm not ready to fight. <laughs> you sound like one of the groups that I gave this to in a workshop. It was these ladies were like, oh, oh, oh. You know, they had something to say. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, remember your okay, yeah, Remember your car? <laughs> just, just tell them, okay, yeah, hold on, moving on. Okay, yeah, hold on, moving on. Yeah. But that, that is their opinion, and what is that? Is Which one is that? What do you think? Uh, action. 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 Yeah. A little bit of control. You can't. Yeah, yeah. Boundaries yeah. Self -love yeah. the boundaries. Self-love. Yeah. Uh, it's always all. Of them. Yeah. It's always all, what? All of them. You need all of them in order to success. As a yeah, I was probably. But, but I don't mean that's a stoic response. Action. I think that's that's being that's my emotional response too. Mm -hmm. Just hit it on the face. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. But I feel that. <laughs> so you make a great point. Like the stoics aren't saying you can't emote. They're just saying be careful about the expectations behind your emotion. Like don't don't pour all this out and. With the expectation that something will change, change. Your behavior or anything. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a woo, so I always want to try to win people over, so I have to explain everything to them, and we'd be there for two hours. Mm -hmm. Either that, or I would lose it. But, <laughs> but I do think there's so much value, and as you get a little more experienced in life, when you realize that in the scheme of things, that's not that important. Yeah. At the moment, it seems like. You know, you've got that fight or flight. But when you look at it, you're like, I don't know this person. Why do I care what they think? You know, let me make sure my children are safe. Okay, I may not be asked to be on the school board, but 
hey, maybe that was supposed to happen, so I wouldn't be on the school board. And go Dude, home and enjoy right. your here's kids, here's right? right? Gatorade, I'm gonna go to the checkout yeah. town, yeah. leave that part where it is. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. 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 I'm probably just telling myself, why is it Wife's at home, so it's better going early to home with a wife right. rather than when just in case. Yeah, yeah. it would be you, worth your time. You know, if you think um, back to courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom, so you can be courageous in responding to this person. You can be temperate in how you do it. You don't have to let everything take you over. Um, the justice component is standing up for yourself, but also treating them with respect. There's a lot, I mean, I'm, we're only spending 40 minutes on this stuff, so, yeah. I appreciate I've it. had yes. that ag talk. No, I was going to say it's five. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've got that ag talk down if anybody wants to practice on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, All you have to do is say, okay, you decide who gets to eat. Okay, so with our last remaining minutes, I want to ask you uh, to think about the eudaimonia life, eudaimonic lifestyle you wrote for yourself on your note card. And now that you have this newfound wisdom, um, think of a challenge that you may encounter on your path to your eudaimonia and how could you apply uh, one of these disciplines to that situation in order to stay on track to your eudaimonia. I'm like panicking about tomorrow, so I'm going to use all of my uh, my principles to not freak out about flights and travel. Yep. And when I get home, I get home. Yeah. Yeah. When I get home, I get home. Yeah. Like when I'm a good time, it's fair to go by. Yes. So, you're a practicing stoic. We're out of time. I wish we had more time, but I. Quick question. I have gotten here I've been thinking a, a lot about this. You know, I've been looking at you know like two researchers from Netherlands, like Hofstede and Trumpinas, they look at cultural components. Uh -huh. And I mean, are there stoics from different like cultural backgrounds? Because it looks like some cultural groups will see, you know, like will you know like to react uh -huh. differently and that'll be their Right? Mm -hmm. They're, uh, mm -hmm. you know, stoic. They're, they'll be their, uh, what's the word, like, uh, their yes, yeah, set of mind. No, the, the word that you, like, the one that you're always pursuing, like. Eudemonia. Yeah, eudemonia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. I, I'm not well read enough yet to have understood it from different cultural perspectives, but you make up a great point. Yeah. I mean, Eastern philosophy is full of very similar yes. concepts to observe and be curious about your own mental state so that you're not acting in ego. Yeah, and a lot of um, focusing on yourself and not externals. So that that's a component that we don't have time to get into, but they have a whole yes. uh, logic around your externals and your internals, and your internals being your thoughts and your opinions, and externals being things that you can't control, what you do for a living, or like what status you have uh, as a professional, or your health, and, and things like that. Yeah, one of the things that the Stoics do is always contemplate on death in order to better appreciate today, and understanding, you know, the flight one is a great example, like, how great, yes, or you know, overwhelming it can feel, like we might have trouble getting home tomorrow, but at the same time, mm -hmm. recognizing I have a home to go home to, I have people who care about me, I'm with my friends, if something goes wrong, we are, you know, I have good resources, I'm, my, I have, uh, I'm from America, I work for the university, you know, like looking at all of the positive things, and then that just can help tamper some of that stuff. So as he was saying, that comes from a lot of Eastern philosophy. But you you make a great point about the cultural yeah. stuff. So. But at the same time, you know, you can say, you know, like I've heard people say, like, you know, Eastern societies, like, they're always, like, upset, like, the yeah. way that they react, you know, or yeah. some, some culture, yeah. some culture. Like, yeah. 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 Okay, folks, so we're out of time. Please help me. Thank you. Uh, yes.